Before I start making my own audio recordings, I wanna show you how to import audio and work with loops in Studio One. So there's different ways you can do this. One way is you can simply just drag and drop any audio file from your Finder or Explorer window directly into Studio One. Now, right now you'll see that my song's tempo is 100 BPM and the BPM of this loop is actually 115, and you can see that it's automatically time-stretched itself to an exact four-bar loop. And if I change the tempo of my song, like 115 BPM, the original tempo of the loop, you can see that the loop conforms to the tempo of the song. Now, when you first create your song in the start page, there's this option here, stretch audio files to song tempo. If you turn this on, any imported audio files that have tempo information will automatically snap to the tempo of your song. But don't fret if you didn't turn this on, you can actually go up to song, song setup, and then under general, you can turn this option on or off. So if I turn this off, and I change my tempo back to 100 BPM, and I drag in that same audio file, you'll see that the audio file does not conform to that four bar loop. Now there is a workaround for this. If you use your arrow tool, and then turn on your toggle snap option here, or you can press N to toggle this, then hover over the right side of the loop, and hold Option or Alt on a PC, you can time stretch the audio to conform to an even four bar loop. So that's a workaround if you're working with any audio that doesn't have tempo information in it already. Another way to work with loops is to use Studio One's built-in loop library. You can access this by pressing function F5 to pull up the browser. And then from here, you can click on home and click on loops, or you can simply select the loops tab up here. This will open up Studio One's loop library. Just double click on a loop to audition it and double click again to stop the playback. Okay, so I like this loop. It'll be a good starting point to keep me in time when I play in my acoustic guitar in the next video. So what I'll do is drag this in and you'll see that it didn't conform to my project tempo. That's because I turned off that option under song setup here. So let me turn on the stretch audio function and I'll try re-importing that loop again. So I'll pull it in here, and look at that. It's a perfect two bar loop. Now I'm gonna start this over at measure two, because I like to start my recordings at measure two. I don't like to start right at measure one. Basically what this does is it gives me a little bit of buffer so that my recordings don't get unexpectedly cut off at measure one. Then what I'll do is I'll press D to duplicate the loop a few times. Now as far as playback and the playhead is concerned, there's a few different ways you can control this. One, you can just simply keep clicking back at measure two to restart the playback there. Another way to do this is to right click up here and enable a play start marker. And what this will do is it'll make sure that the playhead jumps back to that point every time you press play. Another way to do this without the play start marker is to right click on the play button down here and select return to start on stop. With this, if I set my playhead to measure four, then press play. When I press stop, the playhead jumps right back to the starting point. So that's a couple different ways to handle playback and the playhead. In the next video, I'll make a basic one microphone recording with acoustic guitar, and I'll use this recording to demonstrate Studio One's edit tools.